good morning. Good morning. Now, before I issue the call to worship, I want you to recall what I generally say every Sunday, and that is worship is what we do. Worship is not a... Amen. I'm going to invite our uh, staff musician, Katie, to come forward to share some directives with us. So, so as, as we um, prepare for worship today, I just want you to begin to bring something to mind. Um, and because we're going to be singing about our God, and I just want to kind of get the the ball rolling, prime the pump a little bit. What, you don't have to name this right now, but you might be asked to later. So begin to think about who is God? What are some characteristics of our God? Who is he to us? Like one thing I think of is uh, our provider, or um, you might say he's love. So begin to think about who is God? What would we say about him? Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Well, good morning again, Evangel Heights Church family and friends. How good it is to see each and every one of you. Thank you so very much for responding to um, our request that we do no harm here at Evangel Heights as we worship together in person. So thank you for wearing your mask today. And for those of you who forgot, as someone just reminded me, which I do appreciate, uh, today is the day of grace, so next Sunday we'll make sure that uh, we have our mask, and mine is on the pew. Um, for those of you who are worshiping with us online, we are just thankful that you have decided to join us today to worship this awesome living God in spirit and in truth. For our new visitors who are worshiping with us online or in person, I'm Pastor Michelle, the senior pastor here at Evangel Heights, and we are just honored uh, that you've said yes when you were led, when you got up this morning and thought about where am I going to worship today and you decided to come to Evangel Heights UMC. Thank you. You need to know that Evangel Heights United Methodist Church is a church that believes in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. And it will not be uh, too long in the near future when I'm going to just ask people to share with us how they've experienced God answering their prayers. Let me share with those of you who are worshiping with us online and our visitors here, we recognize that because God loves us with a love that we cannot begin to imagine or fathom, because we know that God's will for us is motivated by God's love for us, we know that sometimes when we pray, God does not answer our prayers according to our will. God answers our prayers according to God's will, and God's will is always motivated by God's love for us. We are a congregation that believes in prayer, and if we can join you on your prayer journey, do not hesitate to invite us along. You may complete the prayer request form that's on our website, or you may contact us here at the church. Our number is 574-234-8379. I also want to share with you on today that uh, we're thankful for who you are and for the ways in which God has created you, blessed you with gifts. We ask that you will share that information with us. So please complete the Spiritual Gifts Inventory online and then send me a copy of it uh, to my uh, new email address that is in the beacon on the front page. And then secondly, I want you to know that um, some of you may have taken the Spiritual Gifts Inventory before. Thank you for doing that. Regrettably, we cannot access those records. So we're gonna ask you to please uh, take the spiritual gifts inventory again. Well, I've shared with you that worship is what we do, and I know that you began praying about this worship service before you entered the narthex today. So now I'm going to ask you to please prepare your hearts and minds and let us prepare to worship the awesome living God. God is good. All the time. All the time. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for being the God who you are. You continue to reveal more and more of yourself to us through Jesus Christ as we continue 
to walk here on earth. We ask now that you will prepare our hearts and minds for worship, remove the distractions, remove anything that would keep us from seeing you this day as we come to glorify your name and as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. I pray that you will make your presence known in a special way to your people. Speak a fresh word to each and every one of us. Touch each one here and each person who's worshiping with us online at their deepest point of need. And we give you thanks as we prepare to worship you in spirit and in truth, offering these petitions that are bathed in thanksgiving in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. As we prepare for our opening song today, what a mighty God we serve, I just wanted to invite you to begin to even name aloud some of the things that you have to say about God. Who has something, who it, what is mighty about our God? Or what do you have to say? What characteristic about God do you have? Feel free to just shout it out. Creator. Creator. Merciful. Merciful. Healer. Healer. I heard another one out there too. Consistent. Consistent. Peace and comfort. Peace and comfort. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Almighty. Almighty. Redeemer. Redeemer. Friend. Friend. Life, guide, guide. yes, forgiver, forgiver. life giver, life giving, light. light. So as we start to sing what a mighty God we serve today, you'll notice that the words in the song are not very, uh, well, they're very simple. But it gives us a space in our minds. And even if you wish, there's this verse that says, let us shout and praise God's name. And if you want to shout out praise to God, this is a space that you can do that. You don't have to, but you can. Um, so I just want to invite us all to keep on um, thinking of God's character and all of who he is as we sing this song. Now, this song is an African folk song. Um, I heard that it, it, it was a Zulu folk song, and um, it's What a Mighty God We've Served. I'll play it for you, and then we'll begin. may be seated. And 
and now let us come to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you today for your goodness. You have given us beautiful days. You bless us richly with goodness daily. We thank you and we praise you. We live in a time of considerable confusion. We ask today for your wisdom as Solomon asked for wisdom. We are often fearful, as Solomon was. We live in a time of peril with the COVID-19 virus. Give us patience to work through this latest mandate for the protection of all people. May your healing hand be on those who are in the hospitals and cover and protect the medical staffs as they care for those who are suffering with COVID. You told us there would be wars and rumors of wars, and it continues even today. There's so much unrest in the world, intolerance and lack of acceptance of those with differing opinions. It's gotten out of control. Love through us, Lord, to show the way of love. On a daily basis, there are so many different and competing interests striving for our attention and loyalty. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us, O oh God, we pray for wise, discerning, and loving spirits. Give us wisdom to know good from evil. Give us wisdom to assess the clamoring voices and the concerns with which we are daily bombarded. Give us wisdom so that we might learn to be accepting of all the diverse people you have created. Give us wisdom to be peacemakers and mediators of understanding where there is conflict. Give us wisdom when we are in conflict to make it possible for both of us and for those with whom we differ to save face and win and move forward hand in hand. Give us wisdom not to violate any of your creatures by discriminating against them. Give us wisdom to discern what is of ultimate value for, your, for our souls and to make wise choices. O oh God, hear our prayer. Give us wisdom. O oh God, give us discernment. O oh Lord, give us the will to be faithful. And most of all, O oh God, give us the power to love. We thank you, God, for your presence with us and that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Loving God, you've heard the prayers of your people, the collective prayers of your people. And yet, even as I look out amongst this congregation, I recognize that there are burdens, that there are concerns, there's grief, there's confusion. There's a sense of, is this all that there really is? Should there be more from my job? Should there be more? from my marriage, should there be more? And so loving God, we come this morning 
Yes, acknowledging again that we've not always acted like your children, so please forgive us for our sins of omission and our sins of commission. In the silence of these moments, as the musician continues to play, I pray, loving God, that you will now hear the prayers of your people. We give you thanks, O Lord, knowing that because you are who you are, you've heard each prayer, you've interpreted each silence, and you will respond to each one whose name you know. You will respond out of your love, for each person out of your desire, for each person to experience your best for them. We thank you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Yes, he hears me. 
Good morning, children of God. It is so good to be in God's house today. And I'm so glad, children, that you are watching from home. So gather around. We've got another story to tell that will help you to grow into the people that Jesus wants you to be. Well, I picked up one of the favorite candies of a few people I know. <laughs> and they're, do you know what they are? Smarties. Smarties. Some people call them sweet tarts, but they are marked Smarties. Well, I was thinking about today's um, scripture reading that we're going to hear in a minute. And do you, do you know who the, the smartest person is? Is it somebody at home in your family? Somebody on TV, maybe, or maybe at church. What about the wisest person in the world? I went on the computer, and they gave me all kinds of um, people who claim to be the wisest, who has the wisest advice, the smartest woman, or the wisest man. So... I'm not so sure that was really the best example. What about our Bible? Well, you see, King Solomon asked God to give him wisdom so that he could rule the Israelite people God's way. And he is said to be the wisest ruler. But is there a difference between being smart and being wise? Yes, there is. You see, being smart means you're knowledgeable. That means you have a lot of facts and information right up here. You know a lot of things. You've read a lot of books. You've learned a lot of things. Knowledge. But to be wise is to take those smart information things that you have up here and make wise choices, using them wisely. So things like this, do you eat your vegetables every day? Do you ask for permission to use the computer? Do you ask your sister or brother that you can borrow something from them? Do you spend all your money that you earn or do you give some to the church? Do you always wear a helmet when you're on your bike? Now, I might consider myself somewhat knowledgeable about nutrition and, and um, regular exercise. But sometimes I just don't make wise choices. Sometimes I'll pick a piece of cake instead of exercise. Not always the wisest choice. So, how do we learn to be wise? You see, it comes from our knowledge of the Bible. It comes from God's Word. We have to learn what's in there. King Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, and each one is a little ditty of wise advice on how to live. And so you see, we exist to love God, to glorify him. And then it changes our relationship with others because Jesus lives within us and we act in wise ways. So when you do something or say something, make sure it's a wise choice that will glorify God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us the Bible. Help us to learn about Jesus and how to make wise choices that will glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, today we read from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. 
Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God and the Father for everything. And in the, na in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For special music today, um, it's, we didn't have anyone else to come in and do music. I thought this scripture inspires us to sing and make music. And so I thought I would take a moment and introduce you to a song from our hymn book that you may not know. And it says songs from the spirit. That's what the scripture says. So I wanted to share with you a song. This is number 633. If you listen to this service later or if you're listening online, you could even look it up. Um, it's called The Bread of Life for All is Broken. And this song was written in the 1930s by Christians in China. Um, it's obviously been translated into English for our hymnal, um, but I'm gonna share it with you. It's three verses, and uh, I, I found it very inspiring. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And now we're reading from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the, of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Loving God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart will be acceptable in your sight. Hide me behind the cross so that Pastor Michelle is not seen nor heard. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. These verses that you've just heard from the Gospel of John bring to a close the ending of the Bread of Life discourse that began in verses 22 and concludes with verse 58. This discourse was given at the synagogue in Capernaum. We know from last week that um, Jesus had fed the 5,000 who were following him, not because of what he could offer to them spiritually or eternally. They were following him because he satisfied a physical need. And so this discourse follows, again, the feeding of the 5,000. We stated also on last week that the Jewish or religious leaders, Jesus' opponents, took offense at the fact that he said um, he was the bread of life. And last week, referring to himself as the bread of life, he was referring to himself as logos, the word. But today, today Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. And needless to say, they still could not accept the fact that Jesus Christ was claiming to be the living bread that came down from heaven because they only knew him as Joseph's sons. They had a limited view of him. How, have you thought about how your limited views of someone or something gets in the way of your experiencing a revelation that maybe God would want to share with you? or would want to share with me. For years, I, I had a limited view of people who were known as Catholics. I had a limited view. And then one day, God used a Catholic nun Sister Naomi, to expand my view, to better understand who God is and how God can use anyone or anything. So don't let limited views get in your way, getting in the way of receiving a revelation that God may want to share with you. In spite of these limited views that Jesus' opponents had of him, he continues to reveal himself as the living bread. The living bread is not like other bread. It offers eternal life that begins now. And this living bread is the life, the life of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, we read that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Notice that this bread of life it's for the world. It's not for a subgroup of people. God has no special people. God loves the world. And this living bread is for everyone, regardless of their station in life, regardless of what they've experienced, regardless of who they are. It's for them as well. Just notice this, this insistency, this sense of urgency on the part of Jesus Christ. In spite of the opposition, he continues to declare that he is the living bread. 
And then he refers to himself, not only the living bread as the living bread, but he now refers to this bread as his flesh. Wow. It's one thing to say that I'm the living bread, but it's something else to say that I am the living bread and that bread is me. That bread is my flesh. Wow. Pastor, why are you getting excited about this? I'll tell you why I'm getting excited about this, because I know that there are people who are looking everywhere and in all of the wrong places in particular for something that will satisfy that hunger that they have. It's a hunger that they've tried to satisfy with the occult. It's a hunger that they've tried to satisfy with Pornography, it's a hunger that they've tried to satisfy with financial security. It's a hunger that they've tried to satisfy with power and prestige. And yet, even after all of that, there is that hunger. There is that hunger. A hunger that they try to satisfy by joining certain groups that they think will give them power and prestige. Yes, Jesus Christ declares that this living bread is my flesh. And he goes on to say that those who eat and drink abide in me. Now, what you need to know, you know, we Americans have read these verses so many times. They're just so common to us. But did you know that when he says those who eat, he's not talking about taking an appetizer. He's not talking about eating daintily. No, when he says to eat, he's talking about gnawing and munching and crunching and really digesting him. When he talks about drink, he's talking about abiding with him. So Jesus uses language that would, of course, cause alarm to the Jews. I mean, let's face it. No one eats flesh. The Jewish law stipulated what was clean flesh, what was unclean flesh. No one would think about eating human flesh. The Leviticus laws talked about not drinking blood, and yet Jesus talks about drinking my blood. There is such a desperation here on the part of, of our Lord and Savior. He says, whoever eats me, whoever chews, gnaws, digests me, takes me literally into their lives, allows me to have full reign of their lives, will live because of me. He says, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds gnaws, crunches, munches on me, he will also live because of him. Yes, Jesus Christ shares with us that only through him can we experience real life. He said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to its fullest. I don't know about you, but I don't have any more time to play life. I want to experience the fullness of life that Jesus Christ offers. And the only way to experience the fullness of that life is to eat his flesh, is to drink his blood is to fully live into Jesus Christ, to fully abide in him as he abides in us. Without Jesus Christ, there is no experiencing of real life. Yes. Through the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, We experience eternal life, a life that begins in the now and continues 
into eternity. If you really want to satisfy that deep hunger that nothing else seems to satisfy, I recommend Jesus Christ. He implores you, he implores me, eat of my flesh. Get to know me. Read and study fellowship with me. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Fellowship with me. Be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Get to know me. Not as an aside. Not as someone you will follow as you also follow tarot cards. No. Get to know me. In other words, make me the center of your life. More importantly, let me live my life through you. What would that look like? What would it look like, Evangel Heights Church family and friends, if we said, okay, Jesus, live your life through me. Live your life through this community of faith. What would that look like? Paul, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I believe, gives us a glimpse of, that, of what that would look like on an individual basis, and I would suggest even on a, at a corporate level or as a community of faith. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 reads, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who, gave, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. Jesus Christ invites you and invites me on a daily basis. <laughs> Eat my flesh. Allow me to be at the center of your life. Drink my blood. Abide in me as I abide in you. You've heard during the prayers of the people today, and even as you have watched the news, there are people who are just afraid. They're afraid of other people. They're afraid of people who don't look like them, who do not talk like them, who do not act like them. They're afraid. They, they live in bubbles. They're very careful about who they connect with. They're afraid. Jesus Christ says, eat the living bread. Chew me up. Drink my blood. Allow me to be at the center of your life. What I've discovered, beloved, is that having Jesus Christ, focusing on Jesus Christ, dispels fears. Focusing on Jesus Christ helps me to see people as I 
am called to see them through the eyes of Jesus Christ. The world is afraid. The world who Jesus Christ came to die for needs to know that with Jesus Christ in their life, no one needs to be afraid. With Jesus Christ in our lives, we can live life to its fullest. We can live life free in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. You have challenged us, those of us who are new on this journey called discipleship, those of us who have been on this journey for some time, and for those of us who's been on this journey for a very long time, Jesus, you are calling us to continue to eat your flesh, to continue to munch, chew, on you to continue to allow you to be at the center of our lives. You're calling each of us to commit anew to abiding, to abide in you as you abide in us. Thank you. Thank you for offering yourself to us so that we can experience life to its fullest in you. Amen.
can fathom. God, your love for me is better than I imagined. Sing with me, more than I could ask or seek, more than I can Oh, it's okay to say thank you. <laughs> to say thank you to God through the... Through the back. Something happened last Sunday, and I want to say thank you to you, Evangel Heights Church family and friends, because you made it happen. So last Sunday evening, there were 12 high school youth and young adults who gathered to meet with missionary Steve and Lindsay Paulson. Because of your giving of your first fruits, we were able to gather in a setting where conversation could take place and community could begin to be formed. So I want to thank you for your first fruits. I want to thank you for the ways in which you continue uh, to support this community of faith through your first fruits. As you prepare to offer your first fruits today, I just want to remind you that there are offertory plates um, in the back of the sanctuary. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, you may donate by going to our website, www.eheights.org, and click on the Donate button. Join me now in a word of prayer. Loving and gracious Lord, our God, we know that all that we need, you will provide. You have said in your word that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And we thank you for the ways in which you have provided for our needs in the past, and we thank you that you will continue to do so. We now offer up to you the gifts that these, your people, bring. We thank you for these gifts. We pray that you will bless the gifts as well as the giver. Use both to bring glory and honor to your name as your kingdom is manifested more and more here on earth. In Jesus Christ's name, 
We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I'm going to do something out of order. Let's sing together the doxology. Let's stand. Doxology. I surprised Katie. <laughs> and if you're around Pastor Michelle long enough, you'll know that I may surprise you too. Praise God for more. Praise God. That's right. It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been a very long time, hasn't it? It has been. Again, O oh Lord, I give you thanks for these, your people, and their gifts. Amen. I want to thank you also for um, remain standing because we're going to sing the closing song in a moment. Thank you. I want to also thank you for uh, giving to Hope Ministries. That's our coin offering for this month. And uh, the funds that you give will help to um, purchase food items for their meals. So thank you so very much. Our closing song today is, O oh Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret. Help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the wayward feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way. Let us sing together our closing hymn.
May the peace that only Jesus Christ can give envelop you as you go forth from this place back to your mission field, being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Go forth from this place in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen.